are in Littleton, Colorado. It's about 10.30 in the morning on, I think this is Tuesday. What a hell of a ride we had yesterday. Uh, after we took some photos downtown in Sterling, we stopped on the side of the road. Bill and Rich were pulled over. We stopped, talked to them, and then we continued on. This route had us up in the mountains, um, quite a ways up there, really freaking dark. It was it was a crazy adventure to say the least. At some point we missed a few turns and uh, that really just screwed us up. Our time getting here at the hotel was like 4 a.m. So we did get some sleep. I did have a shower. My car is just looks like a tweaker mobile. It's so dirty. Um, one of the turns we missed, I noticed it was island like it was down a hole. We pulled in somewhere with Tony pulled a few plugs look it just so rich this thing needs a tune-up really bad so i'm gonna pull the sd card out take it upstairs and perhaps um eddie with addiction motorsports tony and him are friends maybe he can look at what i have going on because the plugs are just black black as concrete um it looks like maybe a couple couple of the sparkle plug wires weren't all the way clicked in but nonetheless, I also think I've got too much oil in it. So with all the oil cooler and stuff I added and the and the fuel filter or the oil filter, I drained the oil, probably got about four quarts out of that. Maybe, maybe five. Um, and I've been putting about six in it just because I've got the remote lines going to the cooler and then the lines going to the filter. Well, all that oil was still in the cooler and the lines. I only got out what was in the filter and the pan, and I put six back in it. So I think it's got too much oil in it. Uh, we were running quite warm on the way here. I think that's the issue. Um, just too much oil in the crankcase. So at some point today, I know we're gonna take these cars to the Magic Douche and wash them because they're disgustingly dirty. At some point today, I will drain a couple quarts out of this thing and then make sure I get the level correct. Um, might try and track down some spark plug wires and then the clutch situation. Uh, we're supposed to have it overnighted to here, but it looks like it is a little more involved and more money than I think we are willing to spend. So Tony's got some parts in his car, and we're going to try and see if we can get something together, um, I think, to fix both these clutches in, in the cars. If not, uh, I will do my... If we can't get one fixed between what Tony's got in parts, then maybe I'll just bite the bullet and... Uh, get one overnighted here it was just a little bit pricey and with all the money that my wife and I have spent just to get here and do this and that and and with turbo on the car and it's, it's just we really need to slow down we're going through money like they're not going to make it anymore and I'm gonna have to work some serious overtime when I get back to get caught up but uh yeah I just came out this morning I've got this turbo blanket that I ordered we're gonna throw that on and see if that helps at all um and that's about it. Boy, she's dirty. Filthy dirty. Feel sorry for the people that are gonna do this drive today and then race. Racing's three to 10. Feel bad for those guys.
I figured I'd take the video because Tony's not over here. All right, so let me explain uh, kind of what went on here. So uh, Tony and Tess, they had a friend, Ashley, and she was at the first track and then showed up uh, when we made it to Bandemir. And I got to talking to her and she took me over to uh, James with Build Race Tune and kind of introduced me to him. He came over and uh, quickly explained some things about the Holly. Um, Got the car to idle, you know, pretty good. Uh, he was a little reluctant to help me do much because of the competition rules, uh, but kind of, you know, hey, guided me in this direction, right? So, Ashley and I started kind of messing with the tune, thinking that we may get it better before we go down and make a hit. Well, the car went from, you know, the car had already went almost a thousand miles, you know, 400 miles out to Nebraska and back. Now it wouldn't even rev up. Um, I tried to have my wife get in the car and let and look at the the table as we were driving the car and try and fix it that way. But we created a big hole in the hall if you look at the map, and I didn't think I was going to make it at all. Um, we were able to get it to where it would at least idle. Every time you'd go to give it gas, it would it wanted to die. Um, so I got down there, got down to the lanes, barely. I told Matt Frost that I just wanted to break the beams. He was like, whatever you want, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, and then I kind of got embarrassed because I didn't want my car to be taken out of there, you know, break the beams and have him grab onto it and move it or whatever. So I told Matt, I think I can get, get down the track, but it's almost, it was almost like driving a car, a carbureted car uh, with like no fuel pump or whatever it just it wouldn't go but I limped it down the track and made a 45 second pass uh, then after that Shane uh, he was driving the uh, the green Z car he seen we were having problems he came or he told my wife he would come see us so we stayed at the track till I think 1 or 2 a.m. Um, and I talk about it a, a little bit later, but there was problems with the map sensor, this, that, or the other. Um, and they basically seen that what, you know, I was on like version two or something, cause I had bought that Holly a long time ago and never put it on the car. And they basically were able to convince me, hey, we need to update this thing. So we pushed it over to shore power, plugged the car in, um, plugged the laptop in, and we updated it to the newest version of the Holly. Uh, they were able to repin the map sensor. They gave me a low dollar motorsport map sensor to use, and basically um, the car at least would rev up. Uh, Shane and I took it up the return road. I mean, they shut all the lights off at Bandamere. Uh, I talked to Matt Frost and said, how long can I stay here? And he goes, well, you can't camp up here, but you know, if you need to work on stuff, go ahead. So. I think we were there, you know, like I said, real late. All the lights were off, but we were able to go up the the road, uh, the return road, at least go through the gears. So eventually, um, Tony, Tess, myself, and my wife, we all loaded up, went back to the hotel, and um, at least we're able to start somewhat fresh the next day. All right, y'all, it's Wednesday. I didn't film anything last night. I think my wife might have filmed. I went ahead and made a 45 second pass. And uh, you know, I always am a believer in you learn the most from failure. And what I learned the most yesterday was you don't mess with tunes in your car when you drove it there, right before you would need to get a time slip for Rocky Mountain Race Week. Cause that's what we did. We tried to mess with the Holly and then the car wouldn't run at all. Um, we barely were able to get it to idle down to the lanes and I was able to uh, 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 at least get it to go down uh, the, the, the track, but I wasn't going fast at all. But I had some gentlemen from Wyoming 
uh, offer my wife to come take a look and see what I had going wrong and they were able to find quite a few things that were wrong um, first of all the thing that we were on the internal map sensor in the Holly Terminator which we were not I had a three bar Holly it was not only pinned incorrectly uh, one of the wires was, was broke so every time they were trying to command anything from the map sensor or input that map sensor into the tune uh, the car was just uh, I didn't like anything we ditched the Holly map sensor we put a low dollar motorsport map sensor got it got that figured out we still have a little bit of sputtering like uh, in fifth gear but today is an 80 mile drive and we can do it without the trailer so while we're doing that my wife's going to get into the laptop and get into the learn table and try and smooth those areas out um so right now we're going to go grab some fuel uh we have clutch parts showing up today so we're going to go grab some fuel we're going to try and go meet up with rich and uh and bill they're also stick shift racers and then do our 80 mile drive hopefully we uh, bill will let us leave our trailers at his house do the 80 mile drive come back um i think we're, we can take the car apart at Bill's house, so we'll pull the trans, pull the flywheel, all that stuff, come into town, have that all resurfaced, go back to Bill's, put the car together, <clears throat> and uh, we should be able to make a lick on it tomorrow. So the next day rolls around, we uh, drive to Bill's house, and when we get to Bill's house, Rich, Guido, uh, Tony's talking to him, and Rich introduces me to Matt Blasco, 
and that without any question says I'll get in your car and I'll look at what you got so he he opens up my laptop kind of looks at what maps in it um, and we drive to the first checkpoint my wife gets in the car with Tony and Tess and the Maverick and then Matt and I are in my car and real quick he goes through and the car idles it, it's it's a thousand times better it feels smooth it feels like it's not struggling but I notice and even Matt mentioned you know check your spark plug wires because I'm looking at the tune and some of the stuff I'm seeing I think you got some spark plug wires that aren't that aren't banging so I get to the first checkpoint and Matt gets out of the car Matt was actually being paid by somebody else to be there and tune their car so he got out and and had to go work yeah uh, my wife and i get in my car and it won't start uh, that starter from the tune being bad or whatever it was an original motorcraft starter from 1993. it gave up the ghost it wouldn't start so i actually had to have some fellow chevy guys help me push my car of course it would i would have that luck and we ended up driving the car all the way to the checkpoint, knowing that we couldn't turn it off. Um, running on, you know, I don't know, five to six cylinders, it seemed at, a, at some times. Um, and we went all the way up to the checkpoint, got our picture, and then we actually went to a little town near uh, Bill, near his house, and we were looking for a starter and some plug wires. They hadn't either. Tony told me, Jay, I got those parts in the trailer so let's go back to Bill's house uh, we come out of the auto parts store and, and there's elk everywhere it's kind of amazing but we end up getting back to Bill's get the transmission out of the car um, we had a, a the clutch overnighted from ACT thank you to ACT for that um, there was a gentleman I think it's conifer machine up in Colorado uh, was already closed we Tony took the flywheel to this gentleman and he machined it after hours. Um, all the support that I had had to this point is just amazing. Everybody coming together to get my junk through through race week. And then uh, we go to put the car back together. Uh, Tony notices that uh, the drive shaft doesn't want to come in and out of the transmission. And uh, you know, basically the, the splines were, were twisted in the yoke, but I didn't have one immediately that I could grab a hold of, you know, and and go. So, um, Mr. Stark, uh, he offered, you know, to find me one, but we ended up just putting the car back together how it was. And another gentleman from Canada um, kind of looked at my plugs and said, "Those are the, those are too cold of a plug. So let's try this Auto Light plug." So, needless to say. Um, the car starts up at Bill's house and it's, it feels like a new car. The clutch is now good. We're hitting on all eight. Tony had some extra spark plug wires as well, so we're hitting on all eight. I'm like, we're golden. We're going to make a rip. Well, on the way to the hotel room, the car just randomly would shut off. So we got, I don't know, 10 miles from Bill's house and the car just shuts off. It would turn back on, but it would randomly shut back off. So I thought it was something with the holy. I was too tired to even care. We just got back to the hotel room uh, as fast as we could. And then arrived at Bannamere the next day. I talked to Matt Blasco and actually my father-in-law. Both suggested the TFI is probably bad. Thankfully, uh, I had a TFI with me. So we got the TFI changed out and I was able to make a rip. Day six. And we still haven't made a good pass yet. Maybe today's the day. Woo! Eat shit. <laughs> well, came to get gas. They don't open till two. It is 1.30.
Okay, what are we doing here? We're gonna change the PFI module because we All right, folks, got oh. a couple of things going real quick. Tim Meyer, he's got that. Okay, now you can tell me what you're doing. <laughs> First, I'm trying to find an Allen wrench that'll fit so I can take the TFI module off and put a new one on. Because we got, finally got the car running good. Now, it just shuts off whenever it wants. So, I'm trying to change the TFI module. And then if that doesn't work, we're going to go get a big, giant, thick dynamite and just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Felicia. She's a trooper. the week. And now we go quarter mile in. Sharon Clouds are on the right way. Currently fifth place in the ultimate radio category. Her average 981. Attention to the pits. Hot Rod. Hot Rod. Come on down two and three. Hot Rod. Come on down two and three. And motorcycles. Motorcycles. Come on down to eight. That latest radio
All right, you guys, as you can see, um, way different once Matt got uh, into that computer and was able to put, you know, put a tune up in it. Um, car ran very well, only on six and a half, seven pounds when he'd pull the log. So not making a bunch of boosts. If you're wondering why the car didn't just take off out of the hole, uh, it would bog on pass number one. You could see it's almost like we weren't making enough boosts and it would kind of fall on its face and then pick itself up. Um, perhaps I should have list revved it up to like five, 6,000 and, and let go of the clutch and maybe it would have helped. But nonetheless, the next two passes, I just kind of slowly let off the clutch and went you know, went through the gears. Um, as you can see on the last pass, 131 miles an hour at Bandemir, that's pretty dang good. Um, I wish we could have put, you know, had the two-step activated and, and been able to put more boost to it, but extremely happy with the way the car did. Uh, kind of made all the stuff that I went through worth it. I went home that night to the hotel just um, impressed. Um, it gave me a lot of hope. And, you know, I, I wanted to hook up the two-step before we had left. We had ran all the wires for the inputs and outputs and all that stuff, but it just didn't happen. So uh, that'll do it for this video. Uh, the last video will be us making our drive back to uh, Pueblo, and that'll do it for this series. Sorry I'm behind. I'm a family man. Um, and so I often can't. Editing is work. Uh, and I don't care what anybody says, it's work to sit down and spend three, four, five hours doing this if you want a decent product. And so I'm a little behind where everybody else has probably already posted their Rocky Mountain Race Week stuff. But thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you to Bill Armstrong for letting me use his house and his shop, brand new shop. Uh, Rich Guido, Matt Blasco. All the guys from Canada that came down and were staying at Bill's house are awesome. Thanks to all you guys. Thank you to Tony and Tess. They gave me some of their parts so that I could continue on. Um, Conifer Machine, I think that's the name of the business. Um, Shane Green that helped me out in the Z car. Um, everybody that helped me out, I am extremely thankful. And I realized how much out of my element I am. Um, I'm an old school nitrous carbureted easy stuff kind of guy and so i'm trying to learn all this stuff and um it was extremely humbling so thank you to all those guys that helped me out i really appreciate it thank you to act for sending us a clutch and uh, i'll catch you on the next one Follow me, deal with trauma privately. I don't wanna be a burden, I handle things defiantly. Spent a decade searching for a higher power, God in me. Figured out that faith is not up there, that it's inside of me. Act with execution, what's the plan with zero action? Faced with bad habits, knowing it's a magnet to my imbalance. I'm somewhere between confidence and arrogance. The middle ground is treacherous, I work on getting out of it. Pops is looking down, I feel him every time the sun shines. Back to being unsigned, I only got my bloodline. With me going forward, Forward smoking cookie till we dumb high. I heard you taking shots, we pulled up on them, they was gun shy. 2 p.m. in Rome, we at the chapel eating sun dried tomatoes and a plum wine. Life been like a movie, y'all know how long the run time. Hope it's an extended cut, but when I die, I load my consciousness onto a thumb drive. Yeah. And upload it to the masses when I'm past. All my sets is holographic, life's as real as you imagine. Okay. My Jewish girl was tight, cause I ain't link her on the Sabbath. But it's Friday, and I got a few robins I need a basket. Playing traffic if you wanna play the faction we don't act we getting active stacking cash and dodging taxes my father was a catholic never taught me how to practice but with music i'm a baptist, I'm a baptist. christian all these tracks i bless these raps with standing in the middle